Hi, listener. This is From Ideology to Unity, a spiritual journey where we let go of ego and ideological doctrine in favor of meaning, purpose, and unity as a whole. Today, I'm interviewing Sky Kismet, a light worker, intuitive, mystic, and gardener. Sky has, sub has studied subjects such as metaphysics, symbology, ascension theory, and theosophy for years. She also loves gardening and nature. She's passionate about healing and helping others to help other earth. She's also passionate about helping people understand, I guess, the nature of reality in this uh, difficult time, because um, I suppose it's quite confusing these days, isn't it? It is, and hello, Nick. Yes, hi. <laughs> it is very confusing these days, absolutely, absolutely have um have what's your experience in your perception of what's going on do you mean personally or do you mean on the world global scale oh let's let's zoom it out a little bit um, i mean on the global scale are you yeah. seeing that there's a lot of a lot of conflict amongst your peers you know a lot of uh, differing opinions as to what's really going on i mean even on facebook for example you see quite a broad disagreement I mean, on social media in general there's just huge divides right and it's like two different worlds mm -hmm. and if we were looking yes. at for example politics like it's not even you can't clear cut say oh one side is the higher frequency side or one higher side is the lower frequency side it's more like mm -hmm. among every set of ideas there's there's people who are caught up in that they did this and we did that and this understandable negative and fearful and angry battle that people think is going on. But whereas when the more you understand, I suppose the more you have a higher frequency and start to open your heart, the more you can see a better perspective, maybe and not necessarily a better perspective, but a more holistic perspective that can actually see both or multiple sides to things. And it's, mm -hmm. it's tricky because even though I'm starting to see a bigger picture, like I, I used to have us be on one of the sides, I suppose you could say, on a certain side. And I feel the allure of that, even though I, I'm kind of past it. And it's interesting because um, I still get a reaction sometimes when I see someone saying certain thing online. I'm just like, they don't get it. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, but it's, more, it's more to it than that. And I'm sure... Have you got have you got a similar experience? Yeah, my my experience in observing all of this because I'm the type of person who likes to watch both sides from the middle, you know. Yeah. Um, is I've come up with a theory. I call it the purple pill theory. And oh, oh, right. yeah, and I'm sure you're familiar with the red pill, blue pill uh, matrix. Yeah. Um, a comparison to what's happening right now, right? So you've got what what people would consider the blue pill people mm. who believe everything that they're told via um, established channels. They right? trust the authority and more than they do. themselves. Yep. They trust the authority. Um, they, they, and if anything comes into the experience and the authority says that's not good for you, they're going to say, oh, OK. I have to stay safe and listen to the authority, right? Mm. Then you have the red pill people. And I love my red pill people. <laughs> um, and the red pill people right now are in a place where they're, they feel like there's a different type of savior or authority who's going to save them, right? So you've got yeah. the blue pill people who think that the, the real authority will save them. And then you've got the red pill people who think that there's another authority that will come and save them. And then you've got the black pill people. And the black pill people think that both the red pill people and the blue pill people are all going to 
um, bring us to ruin, right? And that this is never going to get fixed and nothing's ever going to calm down. And we might as well just give up and um, bug out into the woods and live off the land, right? Right. And so I would like to present a new pill to the world called the purple pill, okay? And the purple pill is God is real, okay? Mm-hmm. And he has a hand in this, all right? And energetically, what I've been feeling lately and my intuition is that it's sort of like energetically, we've already sort of won this war, right? Yeah, like we've yeah. already, and right now what's happening is that we're just waiting on timing for things to happen. So for example, I know that in in the last podcast, we had talked about some of the astrological aspects that are affecting all of the different choices that people are making right now. Yeah. There are two, there are two that I specifically highlighted and I want to touch on those two and only those two, because otherwise it gets a little confusing. Oh yeah. Yeah. So when we had the Saturn Neptune square, back in 2016, I believe it was, is when the whole fake news thing started, okay? Now, Saturn is a planet of reality, and Neptune is the planet of illusion, all right? And so when two planets have an exact aspect in the sky, I like to refer to it as having a conversation, all right? So those planets are having a conversation. I've got a question. And, mm -hmm. So I heard that Saturn is about limitation, and time and it is about reality but in the more limited 3d sense am i correct absolutely it is 3d reality it is it is the basic basic 3d reality and neptune is its polar opposite neptune is so if we look at it let's say from the chakra perspective saturn would be everything from the heart down and neptune is the heart up Okay, so Saturn is everything that's grounded and here and in reality that you can see, and Neptune rules everything that is unseen. Okay, so they start having this conversation, and it's a very heavy conversation, and Saturn says to Pluto, okay, well, what, one day soon, I'm going to catch up to you, and everyone in the world's going to know the truth. Everyone in the world is going to understand what the truth is, but that won't happen for another four years. That'll happen in 2024. So when Saturn catches up and conjuncts Pluto, when Saturn goes into Pisces, that's when we're going to see some real, real reality, right? Some real truth come out, but we're not there yet. So, and then we have, oh, Plu- mm-hmm. have no, you go gone? Ahead. So have you gone into the point where we've got reality and we've got the illusion that's come in, but they're not integrated? They're side by side. Right. And so there's a disjunction and people were disagreeing over fundamental reality at this point. And that's mm-hmm. what's so confusing, a part of why. Right. But when those two planets meet, it's, it is going to be an integration of the illusion into the reality. And it, it will be a lot like walking through a funhouse mirror, right? So if, I don't know if you've ever been to a carnival and there's been that those wavy mirrors and you walk up and you look a lot fatter than you really are or a lot thinner than you really are. Now imagine if you were able to walk through that mirror and in doing so invert your entire reality and realize that some of the things you thought were good or not so good. And some of the things that you thought were bad really weren't that bad. That's sort of what's going to be happening for the next four years. And to make it a little bit more challenging, we have, like I mentioned in the last session that we had, we had Pluto and um, and we have Pluto and Capricorn. And what happened a couple days before um, the a couple days before January sixth in the United States, uh, we had our Pluto return. And so Pluto is at the exact place it was during 1776, which I felt it was so interesting that 1776 was like all over the internet during you know January sixth and and um, President Trump had put out his 1776 commission report, and um, there's a lot of 1776 themed things what happening. What happened at in the that moment. year? In 1776 was when we 
won the revolution and gained our independence from England. Yeah, I suspected it was that, but I'm not American, mm -hmm. so. Right, it's yeah. Not the same significant. <laughs> it is yeah, in a day I that remember the Brits when we lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Different perspectives, right? And, yeah. and that's, there we go. Oh, so and think about it that way so that's really interesting that that came up right so you living in england that's the day that you lost and here in the united states that's the day that we won right and so that kind of brings me around to that purple pill theory okay which is that we are all experiencing a different perspective and we are all also creating our own reality right and so I really feel like what needs to happen is that instead of paying attention to all the divisiveness and the drama and there's, you know, there's theories that President Trump's going to come save the day and then there's, there's theories that, oh, everything's going to be perfect and we're going to live in a utopia now that the Democrats are in complete control of the United States and then the rest of the world is thinking a whole different thing. And then we've got the people who think that Donald Trump led everyone down this road and then just d abandoned us. And this is just in our country, right? Right. Those, those are the blue, red, and black pill people, okay? What and the white I'd pill? like to – well, we could create the white pill people. I mean, the white pill is – from my perspective – That would be the polar opposite of the black pill. It's – That makes a little bit more sense. It's like – I guess it's a more pure perspective, but it's, but it means all that fear, anger, resentment. It, you'd have to, I guess, I know, green pill for the heart chakra. <laughs> there we go. Well, I, th I actually, now that you're, you're talking about this, I think that, you know, red versus blue is like, they're kind of opposites in a way, just because they've been presented as opposites in our reality. And now that you're talking about it, I think, the black pill white pill thing is would be good i think i came up with purple because it's more you know third eye crown yeah i mean but, honestly mm -hmm. i think there's a it's also a good thing to mention as well like yeah, yeah the mm -hmm. the third eye does give a better perspective certainly mm -hmm. um but mm -hmm. really in my opinion all we really need to do is open a heart like it's great to yes. have that third eye perspective but mm -hmm. if you had to pick i'd pick an open heart Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, an open heart is the beginning of healing of all the other chakras. So that's, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, but regardless of the color that we call the, the, yeah. the pill, <laughs> right? I think it's just important to understand that what you're observing is what you're going to experience right now. We are birthing a new reality right now. We're at the end of an age and we're at the beginning of a new one. And as soon as Pluto goes into Aquarius in 2024, the same year that Saturn will start to conjunct Neptune, we're going to be fully activated into the age of Aquarius. Now, the age of Aquarius started when radio waves were discovered. It started a long time ago, but we haven't been fully activated because all of our solar system planets haven't hit that mark yet. Oh, right. And so, mm -hmm. and so, I just think that it's very important for all of us to stop focusing outside of our own lives, right? It's been proven to us several times over the past year that we can't necessarily trust everything that's happening, right? Uh, I don't know how it was for you in the, in, in the UK, but when the virus first reared its ugly head and we went into lockdowns, Everyone, you know, freaked out and bought all the toilet paper and there was nothing in the grocery store. And I think we're realizing that the system that we've set up to run the entire world is incredibly fragile. Yeah. Now, whether or not it was created that way so that it could eventually be broken by bad actors is a whole other topic. But, for example, right now, I, um, I was put in the position where a 90 acre farm was sort of put into my lap and the lap of three other people that are on the committee. That's the um, this farm, right? Yes, yes. And this farm um, was, the house was built in 1750 and that's when the orchards were, were planted as well. So we have all these old fruit trees on the property. Um, it is considered 
uh, town land, so it's public land, it's not my own. Um, but when I brought my proposal to the town, as far as what I wanted to do with this property, and this is why I haven't been as active on my on my business page on Facebook and stuff like that lately is because I've been right. working on all these things. But essentially what we're going to be doing is putting in community gardens and doing classes and teaching people how to be more self-sufficient, right? Teaching people how to be able to rely on themselves a little bit more rather than the outside of everything else. And I think that that's where we need to be focused, whether it's in our physicality, right? So um, whether it's trying to get off of certain medications and maybe supplementing that with better diet and herbs, whether it's growing your own food, whether it's learning how to can your own food, I think that getting back to some of those basics is really going to help a lot of us navigate the next four years because I just don't see us getting through this without doing that, without doing that, honestly. Yeah. And it was very synchronistic that this all kind of fell into my lap just a few months ago. I think that mm -hmm. the timing is there, you know, uh, so, and I, and I know that I'm not the only one. I know that, I yeah. know that there is, there is a plan and we're not talking about the trust the plan plan that, that we hear about on the internet, right? We're talking about God's plan. We're talking about what the astrology is saying, because the astrology, you know, astrologers have known that this time was coming for so many years, <laughs> years and years and years, and generations, they've known that this time was coming, and they've known that it was going to be a great, great amount of upheaval, and they've, they've, you know, and so as an astrologer, I've kind of understood that and gotten ready for it, and have enough emergency food in my house and everything that I need in case everything goes down, um, and that's how we have to start behaving, as though everything could fall apart, because it probably will. <sighs> Man, maybe I should, but I've been holding off because I didn't want to be acting out of fear. Right. Well, that's something that's a that's a really genuine concern. And I've gotten a lot of messages from my guides that don't go panic buying. Think about, you know, your basic needs, right? Think about so it, it, it almost like you're doing a practice run. Right. So what I like to what I have in my home is we have five gallons of water per person per day for about a month saved up and we have enough food. Right. And the interesting thing is before I had all these things set up and in place, I wanted to get everything ready for January 6th because I had a feeling that something was going to happen on that day. And it did. Um, the fear went away once I had all these things in place. You know, so you may be acting out of panic and fear, but it may be what's driving you to create a space where, you know, you know, you'll be OK for a window of, let's say, 30 days. You know, we're all set for at least 30 days over right. at my house. I suppose so. And you it know, depends, it depends what your motivation is, because mm -hmm. you know, what? Uh, maybe you don't know what you're feeling, but if you at least try to feel it out and if if there's actually some careful consideration there and it's not all fear, then I guess that's the barometer really. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. so I hear you're, you know, you're big on self-sustainability and permaculture mm -hmm. is something else you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I really think that, mm -hmm. Sorry? What's your understanding of that? My understanding of permaculture? Yeah. Um, well, I don't have a super in-depth understanding of permaculture. I'm going to be studying it as, as I go and kind of testing it out as I go. We have a lot of land to do that on, so it's very exciting to be able to do it. But what the end goal of permaculture is, is to have sustainable food forests that don't need a whole lot of tending that kind of sustain themselves. And um, so, for example, you're planting things next to each other that get along really well. One of them will be putting nitrogen into the soil, while the other one will be eating that nitrogen and providing other things to the soil that the nitrogen producing plant wants. Um, at the farm where I am, we have um, a, a spring. So there's a, there's a spring house and then there's a pond. And we're going to be fixing up the pond and hopefully stocking it with some fish so that that water can be used for fertilizer. And those are the kinds of permaculture and self-sustainability items that not a lot of people think of, you know, that really help you sustain without having to go buy. I want, I want, 
my dream, I don't know if this is uh, exactly in line with permaculture or not, but my dream is that this the space on this farm will be completely um, insular. So whatever we need, we will be producing on the space. And it's going to be a really good challenge, but it's also going to be a lot of fun because we already have a lot of these really old fruit trees from over 200 years ago. Um, we have some black walnut trees, which I don't know if you have those in the UK, but they're a very interesting walnut and you can use the husks of the walnut to dye fabrics and clothes and things like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, and um, there's a lot of herbs um, and forageables growing on the land. We're also going to be setting up a bushcraft camp. So, uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so would you say permaculture is, um at least for you, is it unaligned with any particular ideology? Um, working with Mother Nature, absolutely. Um, I'm very close to to our mama. <laughs> I like to talk yeah. to Gaia a lot. And um, you just have to let the goddess work through you when you're working with the land. Honestly, you just have to let you. It's it's really just you and mom. Okay. When you're really working the land and you're you're not you're not planting monocultures, right? So you're not planting like acres of the same tree so that you can cut it down for wood. You're you're planting a fruit tree or a berry bush or whatever so that not only you have food, but that the bees and the animals around you have food. So that it's a it's a space where everyone is welcome that's that's on that's on the planet that lives around you and so that there's balance and you don't get invasive species issues yeah do not reminds me of you know in um fantasy you get wild elves mm -hmm. I, I imagine that's how they live right or like druids yeah. like i'd say fantasy. so yeah. i think this is how people lived before we started you know packing into city centers and really farming farming you know um mm -hmm. to have to have a space around you that would support just yourself and then you know having more to give back to the community or come together as a community where when you have a bunch of extra zucchini or something like that and sharing amongst the other children of the earth i right. think that's kind of like where where i want to take this so because do you think... oh no go ahead no you're no do you, it's fine do you think because... it would be mm -hmm. trade that would occur would be coming from a place of love and generosity rather than a sort of self-centered um yes trade but fundamentally you can transform something yeah I, I, would you say that a, a way of hmm what at all isn't inherently good or bad or anything it's how it's used and the energy of that right mm -hmm. and if yeah, and your intention mm -hmm. permaculture for example is a tool then or if trade is a tool then fundamentally let's say trade is what we want to suggest like it could be done in a selfish way or it could be done in a way that's self-sustainable and generous and loving and fundamentally mm -hmm. there's a way to do anything in a a more loving way i suppose absolutely yeah and that's what yeah. i feel like coming into this as you build this new earth we're going to be increasingly following that principle is like how can we put love into this like so it's not like oh they're absolutely. doing it the way the wrong way we've got to fight them because they're doing it the wrong way this is the way we do it like no 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 we, we can right form it with, with with love and that's what i was mm -hmm. discussing in the episode um yesterday actually so mm -hmm. you might be interested in that um it's about social definitely and permaculture oh wonderful yeah wonderful yeah i uh, i would love to listen to that i'll do that when we get off um but yeah i i because we are able to now create our own realities more so than we have been in the last several years because we are in a place where all the light workers have done their job. We've collapsed all the old timelines. We've cleared a lot of the old karma. We're right. ready. We're ready to pack our bags and move to a new age. We really are. And we're on this one singular timeline. And you can you can see it because everyone's focused on the same few things, the same few issues. The United States election, coronavirus, you know, 
the whole world is watching these certain things. And that's how you know we're all on the same trajectory. We're all on the same timeline. Okay. And what will happen, and that's 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 us being in fourth dimension. It's why all the chaos is going on. It's why everything is just sort of shifting and falling apart is because we're now all in the same very rapidly moving river. And at some point it will fork. Oh, and you just okay. have to follow you just have to follow the flow to 5D. So it already it's feels mis- like there's two clear perspectives. I mean, it's it's not a clear cut because obviously there's two clear-cut political perspectives but like beyond that like there's actually it's more than just simply like two political perspectives obviously but like even aside from that there's different levels of frequency and but there is still this is two seems to be this number like there's a division and the question is some will integrate together into one timeline I suppose you could say there's a, a light integration and a dark integration. And Absolutely. Which one are you? Which one are you? Yeah. Well, it's it's. Can you integrate your own personal darkness, accept it, forgive yourself, and move on? It's the only way to raise your vibration is to integrate yeah. your own personal darkness. You have to get to know it. We're all integrating darkness as a collective right now. That's what you're seeing. So a lot what? of people who haven't who haven't done the work and who haven't really healed a lot inside, they're terrified. They're terrified of anything that you can see in the news today, they're terrified. They are frozen and terrified and it's it's very, very difficult and they're finding it very hard to just surrender yeah. and live their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you have and then you have people who have been through this in the past 10 years. And I honestly the way that I saw it energetically when coronavirus hit, when COVID-19 hit, it was like we all had a hand of cards and we were all playing a game. And when COVID-19 hit and we went into lockdown, the cards were taken away, reshuffled, and we got new hands. And now it's up to us to learn how to work with that new hand. And if you don't understand that you're playing a game, (laughs) then you don't understand that that even occurred. And so people who don't have that, higher understanding you know it's possible that they could just march blindly and and go in the quote-unquote wrong direction but i think it's important to understand that there is no wrong direction and that we are going to follow whichever timeline is best for our souls our souls growth right so if you haven't you know and i i don't i know that we like to talk about frequency and levels of frequency and that kind of thing often um, but I, I don't want people to feel as though just because they're sad or angry or depressed that they're low frequency. Is that an understanding that you have? I wouldn't say it's about where your homeostasis is, in my opinion. So sometimes you need to go through some maybe low frequency emotions and certainly mm-hmm. feel it for it to come up. But you can't clear it without feeling it. Mm -hmm. Because it's like it comes from your subconscious up into your conscious. And when it's in the conscious, you really feel it. And you're going to let yourself feel it and let it flow out of you. And then Mm -hmm. when you do that enough, uh, meditate on it. Maybe you can get therapy on it. Or maybe not therapy. But, you know, just really let yourself feel it and explore it. Get to know it. Get to know the scars and all of that. And clear yourself out balance yourself out and so forth and this is Mm -hmm. happening globally as well as just individually that's as i understand it yes and we're so what we're yeah so what we're doing right now is we're navigating polarity right we're constantly being pulled this way or that way but we're we're needing to navigate and kind of stay focused on the end goal you know, and I think that it's important to recognize that there isn't just one truth out there right now. There, you know, some people are like, we have to find the truth. We have to know what's going on. We have to, we have to know what's going on. But, and it sounds like out there, right? But everyone is experiencing a different truth right now. And it's the truth that they're choosing. You're choosing your truth. You're choosing your reality. You're choosing where you're going. 
by what you're observing and what you choose to believe, you know? Yeah, though yeah. I, I have this optimistic feeling that those who are on the quote-unquote wrong trajectory, where they've done no inner work or anything, um, I feel <laughs> like maybe it might be more difficult for them for a while, but they will mm -hmm. come back into the timeline at a later point and it will be all right yes. for them it just won't be so easy but that's just the path they're on and that's just the path they chose exactly, just, exactly. it is what it is right there's nothing mm -hmm. to be it's not like something to for them or us to denigrate it's just simply it's part of the pattern that's manifesting in reality and that's just it. yes and it's all a matter of timing, right? Mm -hmm. So all of the folks that we would consider still sleeping or unaware, you know, or low vibration or, or, or you know, we can put those people, we'll, we'll call them the blue pill people, right? Um, imagine, since they're all focused on one thing right now, imagine if something happened to wake them all up at the same time. Imagine the amazing effect that would have on our reality. Like on the 6th of... January or the 20th of January or March of last year or and these things will continue to happen you know yeah. it, this this whole process that we're going through as a planet right now is so that these people can get in line with everyone else and so we all just kind of have to hold like what I do as a really um, a very integrated and established light worker who like knows what I'm understands what's going on inside of my own energy body and understands what my responsibility is, is just holding it down and trying to maintain my own vibration and maintain my own stuff that comes up because I've gone through a whole lot of fear this year too. I don't think there's a single person in the planet who hasn't faced a lot of fear this, this past Maybe year. Maybe Eckhart Tolle or something. <laughs> I don't know. That guru. You never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose you don't know for sure. That's true. That's true. For me, it was really just in the beginning of March um, when I was still working. There was a day that I was terrified to leave the house. I was absolutely terrified. I had been watching all the videos coming over from China and how they were treating people and, and their response, to, their reaction to the virus. And I worked in um, like a town center. Hmm. And a very busy one. And slowly, 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 the week before our, our, our first lockdown, um, I saw that like businesses were closing, there were less people, there were no cars. And it was just that change, that shift in my reality that had me really terrified. What it was you scared of in particular? The virus I don't, itself see, that's or the, the thing. lockdowns? or That's the thing. I don't know. I don't know what I was terrified of because I have a very healthy immune system and I'm not scared of this virus. I've never been scared of this virus. Like in my opinion, I would, I, I almost want to just get it so that I have it over with. Right. What if it wasn't your fear? It could have been, it could have been that I, well, you know, I was, it, it was my fear because okay. it was, I was in my own home when this panic right. attack hit me, I just was terrified. You know, I was just, and it was, it was absolutely irrational. It well, was absolutely it irrational. I mean, it was it was based on what we thought at that point were facts, you know. It was based on um, on the videos that were coming over from China, and then eventually I did realize that okay, I don't need to be so scared. And honestly, when the lockdown started, I needed a vacation very badly, so <laughs> so I was cool with that. Um, but I can imagine that someone who's a little less strong mentally and psychologically than myself would still be in that place today because of what they're observing, right? right. Because of the well, media that they observe, because of, hmm. you know, all of that. I, I mean, I feel like it wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, if a few things in my life happened differently, I, I might be in a much worse place. Um, yeah, so I'm grateful for the progress I've made and, and so I understand that with everything going on in the world right now, like, it's difficult for people. It really is. And 
Mm -hmm. People who had it together for a long time, but now they don't, and it's like everything's fallen apart and they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, um... And meanwhile, my life was quite the opposite. Everything <laughs> was falling apart until um, September 2019. Oh. And I got... I got into my new apartment, I got settled, and boom, it happened. And I was so grateful, so incredibly grateful that we had moved and that my 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 past was behind me and that I could move forward in a new way, you know. I, I got right. when I when 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 they handed when they rehanded out the cards, they took my losing hand and handed me a winning hand. Right? Like I had a royal flush. <laughs> oh, what happened for me is that I went from a losing hand to a winning hand but in between it was like it felt like a really bad hand it was like, it's, it's mm. like it's like the first card i saw was like the worst possible card and then suddenly yeah. i looked at, actually no this, this is actually all right it, it just um yeah i mean it's different for everyone isn't it but there's there's um acclimatizing to the sudden change you know it takes yes yeah it, it take it's quite a shock for everyone and different things affected different people even though mm -hmm. the coronavirus is there some people it's politics some people are really drawn into this the the energy i suppose is just of a battle mm -hmm. and for them mm -hmm. they, they they feel like well and i was there i was in this political ideology sort of battle mindset for, i would say from about I don't know, from about, I don't know, maybe 2009, 2010, all the way to, mm -hmm. all the way until mid-2020, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, so I, I understand it. And like, there's, and some people, you know, it's about whether the virus is like real or not. But some people it's like, something personal there's all sorts of things and I suppose, yeah yeah what's the most important thing for this um astrologically perhaps but like then you haven't mentioned the most the most important thing right now is to understand that no one's going to come save you and that you have to claim your own sovereignty yeah. And there's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different levels upon which you have to claim your own sovereignty, spiritually, psychologically, the information that you're taking in, the, the source of food that you have, the source of water that you have, the roof over your head, whether or not, you know, they just, I mean, they just made water a public, um, they made it public on the stock market now. So you can start betting on water futures. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not okay. <laughs> you know, so, so I'm, I'm grateful in that I have the space that I, that I have access to. It has, a, it has a, a spring water, right? I can grow as much food as I want there. There's plenty of sun. It's known as the most fertile land in my County. It was, it oh. was back in the 1800s. Um, and there's a huge aquifer under this land. Right. Wow. And so aquifer is important in terms of, um, yeah. Oh, like the pyramids are built on an aquifer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you might be like the spiritual set, one of the spiritual centers, and like, well, that's know, something that years in my, or something. Well, it's something in my own personal chart. I do have a lot of leadership, and the I build have a pyramid. It, well, I'm, no, I'm no, joking, no, I'm not but... going to build a pyramid, but I am going to try to gather my community of neighbors and friends together in this space, right, so that we good. can start to operate a little bit outside of the system that's that's in place right now. Because once you know, this social credit system from China and stuff like that starts being implemented, you know, it's very difficult yeah. to escape it unless we start creating oases away from all of that. Yeah. You know, that's definitely... and that's what I would like to create. And that's what, you know, I got I had the weirdest intuition. I've never had this feeling before in my life. When I moved to the town that I live in, you know, I was sitting outside with my partner and we were just talking about how we really lucked out, you know, because the apartment that I found, it was so serendipitous, Nick, that like you, you, I should tell you the story when we're not having a podcast at some time, yeah. because it would crack you up. 
the way that I found this apartment. Um, and I just got spit into this new reality. And, and the, the move was so uh, tumultuous that it felt like I was giving birth. You know, it was like, <laughs> I definitely birthed yeah. a new reality for, for myself and my, and my partner and my brother. And as a woman, that's my job, you know? Um, but but I had this weird sensation that like, I would fight for this place that I live in. And I've never had that sensation before. I've never felt like I would do whatever I could to protect where I was. I've, I, I've never been that um, attached to the town that I live in or, or anything like that. I've always moved every, you know, four or five years. And it, it's never been like, oh, I want to stay here forever. And this is a I want to stay here forever kind of a place, you know? So, and that's, that's what my role is going to be is to gather this community together um, around this farm and within the context of this farm and begin teaching each other and begin supporting each other. There's going to be, you know, a food pantry, there's going to be classes, there's going to be all that stuff. And so if we can all find those actions that we can take in our own lives to create something like a greater reset right so th there's talk yeah, about the great reset yeah. if we can create our own reset before they can implement their great reset it would be much healthier for the That's, collective yeah I, I think that, that i've had the same idea like it can be a great reset but we can decide what it is and i, I love the idea of that because the time for us to be dependent on authorities and that that's over now um yeah. and then maybe trying to co-opt this astrological situation for their ends but it, it's ultimately a sort of they're trying to co-opt co not only the astrological situation but also the ascension situation they're yeah. trying to take all all of our good intended things like becoming less dependent on fossil fuels and sort of turning it against us and using it as, as a means of control right. so I if we can start work, doing though. it's kind of crazy to even no, try it's not it's not because we're all, there's a lot of people, I, I know in my heart, and I'm getting goosebumps, I know in my heart that there are thousands of people like myself who have suddenly come upon their own personal solutions for their own communities that, is at, that are outside of what the system would, would expect at all. Ah. And so, mm -hmm. I've got an idea. I mean, like lots, anyone can basically try this. It, it, well, I don't know about anyone. I mean, even if you've got just a balcony, maybe you can just do it a little bit by just like getting a few pots and like stuff that you can mm -hmm. eat. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's different ways to do it. Um, yeah. And, and by doing that, you're putting an energy signature out into the universe to say, I want more of this. Yeah, you could get litter trays and put them on your mm -hmm. like balcony and like just put mm -hmm. soil in them and like grow like I don't know, like lettuce and radishes. Yeah, things that are useful. And it's even if it's just a, a little extra thing, you know, it mm -hmm. contributes. And mm -hmm. if loads of people did this, if enough people did this, the more people we do it, the more the less the less dependent we are on corporations, on the state, mm -hmm. on authority and just the the energy of control like the more we are building and growing the new earth mm -hmm. even, and le like you said even if it's small steps just within your the context of your own life it's it it, it all adds up just to a, a much better picture than what we're looking at right so now maybe we could buy think, seeds and stuff like, that's what i'm thinking absolutely. maybe you actually want to do that even if you should even if i don't like immediately start like doing loads of gardening all over because mm -hmm. i'm living with my mum at the moment i'm not sure if she'd be happy with me suddenly like <laughs> transforming the garden into i've a, been um, there yeah <laughs> yeah but certainly if you've got resources to do it um mm -hmm. yeah it, it's definitely worth at least having and you can start practicing yeah mm -hmm. yeah actually so I mean, I had that realization as you were talking, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you, when you realize that, okay, so my, if my basic needs are met, why do I need any of these other outside influences? Why do I need, you know, 
someone telling me what my carbon footprint is, I know that I'm doing everything to the best of my capability. And, you know, and once we begin working outside of that structure, that's how the new earth will be created is be yeah. because this we're right now we're sort of caught up in the wreckage of a, a reality that's crumbling. Right. Yeah, and so absolutely. it's it's important to remove yourself from that wreckage and say, this is not what I'm choosing. This is what I'm choosing. And make it very clear to the universe that this is what you're choosing through your actions, through work that you want to put in. Like, even if you just like for yourself, even if you buy one pot and fill it with dirt and grow a kale plant and you're able to take some of those leaves and cook them up with your eggs every morning. And, and because what that's going to do is it's going to activate inside of yourself. OK, I can do this. I can grow food. Look, I'm eating something that I grew, yeah. you know. And another thing is and how it, will you feel when you do that? Yeah, you will be nurturing a, huge... a little plant. Now, it's not I mean, it's not like having a dog, but, you know, mm -hmm. you might actually you might, you know, start saying, hey, hey, little cabbage, how are you doing today? And, yeah. And stuff like that. <laughs> um, yeah. So is there anything else about like the reality and illusion and truth perception like you want to discuss? You know, it's it's such a it's such a funny thing to try to pin down because it's almost like as you as you chase it, it you know, the goalpost moves. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, just that, just that it's important as you're observing, right? As you're observing, um, I don't like using the proper word for it because the internet's got, you know, gotten very flaggy lately. So for example, the person who won the contest in the, in the United States and was inaugurated on the 20th, right? Yes. You're seeing that happen. And, 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 okay. So you're seeing that happen. Pay attention to how it makes you feel inside of yourself, right? Are you happy? Are you upset? Do you feel nauseous? Right. These are all triggers that are coming from, because we're watching something on a global scale. These are all triggers that are coming from our global collective karma, right? The last time that we went through something like this is, is stored in your DNA and, it, and that's stuff that's coming up. And that's like the last vestiges of the old earth leaving your system. So when you're watching things happen on the global scale and they're bringing up stuff inside of yourself, it's just important to acknowledge that this is stuff coming up, just like if, you know, you stubbed your toe on the way out the door and fell, and then you relate to work and you ran into your boss on the way in and, and you feel like rushed and upset and nervous. It doesn't matter what's happening to make you feel the way you're feeling. The, the point of it is that these things are coming up to be cleared. 100%. Yeah. 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 And things, as and we are given this part, maybe by our spirit guides or something, I don't know, maybe God, whatever you call it, like these opportunities come up so we can clear this. And yeah, it's, um, it's something to be grateful for, but when you don't have that perspective and you're caught up in it, um, mm -hmm. it's easy to miss the lesson that can be learned. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you just, it will just keep repeating until you learn it. And it's like a. And I have a personal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's like a I have a game. personal story. Yeah, it is like a ball game. Yeah, I have a personal story about an individual. She's one of my best friends. I'm at her house right now. Um, who I've known this wonderful woman for uh, since 2001, and we are very much very similar, but very different also in a lot of ways. And she she calls me out the other night and she goes, do I, am I a control freak? <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you really are. Like, I love you. And it's not, you know, there's like a toxic control freak. And then there's just a person who is just more comfortable and less anxious if they're in control. And those are two completely different people. Yeah. Um, and she's, she's the late, the latter, but, um, but just knowing her, and knowing that she is she has come to this realization after after this much time 
I know there's a deep shift happening in the planet right. because this is someone that I, you know, I loved her and I, 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 but I just didn't think that she'd really see that inside of herself and want to change it. You know, she's very accepting of who she is and, and this is who she is. And I love her for exactly who she is. So I never expected her to deep, to deep dive this way, but she's now been put into a position where she's able to deep dive in this way because a lot of chaos and stuff like that, that was happening before the virus is not in her life anymore because of decisions that she made. And those were good decisions. And so now she's able to, to as a 41 year old woman, she's able to sit and look and say, oh, maybe, okay, maybe that's a little, I'm a little controlling, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Each of the things that certain vested interests might have tried to do or skew for certain agendas or whatever, like each of these things, is actually turning out to be working out for the light, I suppose. But it's not yes, every... apparent. It, it takes time. Well, time is becoming less meaningful, but it takes change, uh, whatever you call it. It, 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 it takes time to play out. And uh, yes, and mm hmm. I've, I've observed that every single thing that the dark is trying to do lately has just been backfiring in their face, you know, yeah. you know, then, and, and I won't bring up specific examples because, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to go off on politics. We don't want to go off on control systems. Right. But I have faith <laughs> that I have faith that whatever it is, it'll work out. Yeah. And I also have faith that, you know, for four years, um, they've been talking about nothing but one orange gentleman, right? The media, everyone, no, no one. And now it's, it's almost like they don't know what to talk about and all the focus is on them. And I'm finding it really, really interesting to, to see what's, you know, cause you know that there's going to be infighting beginning. There's going to be a lot of infighting happening. And I think we're going to be able to see them destroy themselves. I, yeah, I agree. Um, also, I feel like what it has served to do is, well, the last four years, it's served to, to put it in a really simplistic way, wake up the right. Well, no, no, mm -hmm. no, actually, no, not the last four years. Maybe it woke up the left. The, la the election or the competition or whatever it is. Is that, did I use a word that I shouldn't have used? I, I don't know. Oh, well, I mean, I, right. I think it's fine. I, I well, don't think Well, what it has done we're... is from the subjective perception of many people who expected a certain candidate to win, um, mm -hmm. from their perspective, now, those who didn't, those who trusted the, the system, mm -hmm. the competition system, no longer trust it. Now, these, the right traditionally has all been about, well, tradition and mm -hmm. keeping things the same. And mm -hmm. when they don't believe in the system anymore, when they believe, when they believe there has to be change, there's no one, like, who, who is actually wants to remain the same anymore other than maybe people who are, I don't know, like, it's like we walk through a funhouse mirror and the left is the right and the right is the left and no one knows which way is but up. But even then, like the, the, the left is the left. I mean, we don't have the traditional right anymore. So things are more going to no. change because it's what the normal force that would keep it. The, what we thought was the balance is the now normal gone. polarity, right? The polarity right. is gone. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's that, for the left. Yeah. Well, first of all, they came across a lot of things happening, a lot of changes happening that sh were quite shocking for them um, mm -hmm. and it, in the last four years and or so. And it's not just in America uh, and the mm -hmm. UK that also happened. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these, when people get shocked out of their expectations playing out, that mm -hmm. wakes them up a bit. Their awareness yes. rises and they're able to potentially see things in new ways so even if it seems like really bad and everyone's fighting and squabbling actually a lot of people are going to be waking up inevitably and when mm -hmm. the more things come out 
I mean, you said in four years' time there's going to be a big reveal, big reveals and stuff, but mm -hmm. there might be a little bits. Like, it's going to be a slow drip. This right. isn't Saturn and, and Neptune don't move quickly. They move very slowly because they have such a, a, a large orbit around our planet, around the sun. Yeah. So so this is this will be a slow drip, just like the age of Aquarius, the age of Aquarius. Again, it began when we discovered radio waves. That's funny. that's when it began. It's funny you say a slow drip because the age of Aquarius is the water barrier. So it's like these. So there's this whole bucket that's going to be dumped in 2024 yeah. but we're getting drips from it and those drips are like ah mm -hmm. oh, this information oh my god right because mm -hmm. it is about information right so yeah yeah it, and so like this i suppose as things play out more and more people waking up and of course the frequency is naturally doing that as well the more we get these because we're going apparently we're going entering an area of space that has more high frequency in it Mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. so inevitably things are shaking up mm -hmm. in terms of people's perceptions right and i think um one meme that i saw that um that kind of encapsulates this whole thing was someone poking fun at the left in the united states because they were all celebrating that we voted out a dictator and they're they're not realizing that you can't vote out a dictator <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, oh that, that is a good point <laughs> I mean, you I know? mean, if only it was so easy in the 1940s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just for the, right. for your audience, I, I want to kind of just put it out there that mm. I didn't really have all my eggs in either of those baskets. Yeah, it is worth keeping in mind. Like, I, mm -hmm. I have part of me is like, has a draw to a certain side, but I'm also mm -hmm. aware that I need to move past being like that. And Right. I'm sure many of us are aware of that. And like, it's no longer about a side, mm -hmm. right? Oh, there was just so It's about ahead. us becoming our own leaders. We have to start yeah. becoming our own leaders within our own communities. It's there just, was a song. It's, across, it's yeah. vital. There was mm -hmm. a song I came across. And I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it goes like, will you find, will you pick a side? Will you find yourself broken in darkness? Um, and that's what it's talking about. Um, so it's like, uh, it's World in Fire by someone. I can't remember. Mm. But it's quite meaningful to me. And I feel like synchronistically it came up because like mm -hmm. you can take a side and you can get all embroiled in these arguments and everything. And you can be really bitter about they did this and they did that and like, and all of this stuff that, I mean, the elites do divide and conquer, so they would like that. But yes. That, that's, that's a timeline that is associated with that mentality. But it mm -hmm. might be worth changing the approach yeah. uh, at this point. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, so, oh, it's by Clergy. World on Fire by Clergy. That, that song resonates mm -hmm. with me when it comes to this theme of do we have this divided perspective and then take a side and have that darkness that comes with it or do we mm -hmm. choose another way and that's for every individual yeah, do we come together ask themselves yeah we all have our own basic need we all have the same basic needs that need meeting oh. you know and that's that's another reason why i tend towards self-sustainability to try to unify us a little bit is because if we all and it may be that we will all be forced to. I pray that that's not the case. But if we all act as though we're being forced to come up with our own way of surviving, some of the issues that we argue about are going to seem smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm. You know, some of the things that we argue about, and I'm not yeah. going to bring up examples because I don't want to seem like I'm on one side or another, yeah. but uh, there are things that I see folks arguing about where I'm like rolling my eyes, just like, you know, why can't the individual choose to just be an individual without, you know, as long as that person has good intention, I'm not talking about people who want to rape, murder, or kill, or steal, or, or you know, any of those things, right? But the basic everyday human being who has good intentions, loves their family, and just needs to put some food on the table, right? Yes, they have their opinions, but they also have their personality. And those two things are completely separate, you know? 
and opinions don't generally hurt people. <laughs> people <laughs> and to allow get hurt others by opinions, or they. Mm -hmm. The thing is, what I recognize is that we choose how we react. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So if someone has a differing opinion, whether it's about your uh, choice of sexuality or gender, whether it's your choice of the food that you consume, you know, whether you're a vegan or not, um, you know, if, if you're getting defensive, you're, you're, you're needing to do some work, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's just, it's just the way that it is, <laughs> so, you know, no matter the issue, no matter the issue, you know, to, to feel okay, just being yourself it has all to do with the inner work and nothing to do with what other people think of you. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're right. And I've been learning that as well. Yeah, yeah. And the more we learn these lessons, the more easy it is for other people to learn those lessons. Oh, sure. And I don't know, 2020, if, if, I, if I cared what people thought of me at the beginning of 2020, I cared even less at the end. You know, I, I really, at this, at this point, um, I'm on your podcast right now. And so I, I'm keeping my personal opinions out of a lot of our conversation. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, I have my personal opinions and those opinions conflict with people that I love and care about. And I've often over the last five or 10 years been scared to voice those opinions. But at this point, if I'm asked directly what my opinion is on something, I have no problem being very lovingly honest yeah. and a allowing that person to walk away from me if that's if that's the case yeah though there, there's mm -hmm. a balance to strike between being sensitive and speaking your truth and also for me yeah I, I i'm committed to this podcast is about from ideology to unity mm -hmm. so moving mm -hmm. away from dogma right and i'm aware of that but i'm also aware that i have certain perspectives at the moment on things now i don't mm -hmm. want to be too attached to those perspectives but i have those perspectives and that's my and i have my truths at, as things stand so i want to emphasize the we're moving we have to move towards unity and mm -hmm. um less division but and that's like you know of this fight and flight tribal mentality but there are certain things that are true to me as things stand mm -hmm. yeah and they're not um, true to someone else one example that i used with a client the other day was if you take an everyday object let's say um this notebook right i'm holding up the notebook for the, the viewers that are or the listeners that can't see i'm holding up a notebook so to one person this notebook could be where they write down everything that happens to them every day. For another person, it could be a place where they sketch before they start painting. For another person, that notebook could have been on the floor, right by the stairs, on their way out to work, and they trip over it, fall down the stairs, break their femur, and their entire life changes, right? And yeah. that's just one thing in our reality. You could, you could say it about anything else else you know someone's going to love this color someone's going to hate this color you know and and that's that's the thing is that everyone perceives everything differently so when it comes to these larger issues there's a there's about there's a lot of surrender that needs to happen to allow others to go through their own process and come to their own truth and become sovereign inside of themselves and think for themselves and lately there's this pressure to to adhere to group think rather than in the individual individual think and i'm here to say that's something that i'm very very against you know to, to to say that the individuals anything is the is the responsibility of the collective is a very toxic thing whether it's their health um, their mental stability you know yada 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 you have to take care of yourself first and that sounds very selfish until you start thinking about it right because if i'm not taking care of myself then I'm expecting everyone around me to take care of me. Which one is more selfish? Right. That's true. Although right? mm -hmm. I feel like the way to go is, and I'm increasing, you know, acting on this consistently is another thing, but acting with a combination or responding with a combination of courage and love. Mm -hmm. So 
you can speak your truth and if they don't like it they don't like it but at the same time you know don't be like you you don't want to antagonize things oh absolutely absolutely you know and it's you know when the people that you love in your life have needs and you could meet those needs easily without um without encroaching on your own health and well-being then then it's important to remain in a very giving loving place right it's it's more along the lines of you know some of these lockdowns and things like that that have been happening they've put us into this place where the individual's health is a collective responsibility and that to me is dangerous because one person remaining healthy in their homes is is it's it's a wonderful thing but if it's if it's if the result of that is that someone else's business is lost and their entire um, line of, of income is, is completely obliterated because of someone else's health problem, then, then that's, that's where it becomes toxic. That, that becomes yeah. extremely toxic. I agree. You know, although I just had whole a, families. Mm-hmm. I had a sort of eureka and it's that this whole situation gives people an opportunity potentially, although this isn't easy, to lose their fear of death. And mm-hmm. now, I mean, just started reading A Course for Miracles very recently, and there's this idea mm-hmm. that it's like this series of uh, logic, I guess, that we build our ego on or something. And a lot of it comes from a fear of death and from that, a fear of God. And I'm not sure about, mm-hmm. now, aside from whether or not it's literally a fear of God or anything, like if people can get past the fear of death, well it's it brings that, that up the coronavirus brings mm-hmm. it up because people are literally afraid of dying or afraid of those they care about dying let's just go mm-hmm. they're afraid of dying well it gives us by coming up it literally gives us the opportunity to if we can get through that and some people will be like literally mm-hmm. that will help people open their hearts mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. a lot absolutely of, yeah so there's always a positive side to this that we can consider and that's the when it comes down to this principle and there's, there's the reality and there's the mm-hmm. illusion but the truth is mm-hmm. the illusion is reality as well and, mm-hmm. and they're both teaching us something yeah mm-hmm. and the integration mm-hmm. of these two things is literally the end of duality manifesting in the world right and mm-hmm. we are moving to a unified non Dualistic moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it requires a lot of faith, you know. And 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 I I've been feeling that this entire last fourteen months or however long it's been. I guess it's what twelve months, less than twelve months, it's, it's ten months, however long it's been. Is that the fear of death is is really driving us right now? And it's interesting that people are refusing to live in order to avoid any death does that make sense yeah it does and that to me it's almost like okay so what are we doing here are we gonna live you know or are we gonna are we gonna be afraid yeah you know it said and i'm sure it's been said elsewhere but in a course for miracles which i started reading very recently uh Mm -hmm. it, it says that if you're living in fear, you're not living at all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's kind of it's a zombie sort of state, essentially. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, you're surviving, but are you thriving? You know, are you really enjoying your life? Are you, you know, and anything that's trying to take that away from you is something that you should question. Right. But I suppose we can be grateful for this great opportunity to come back to an abundant state that the last Mm -hmm. time we really had something like this was the Tomb of Atlantis. Yes, it was. It was. It absolutely was. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not a coincidence, right, that we're starting to get that Mm -hmm. wisdom, like the Emerald Tablets and, well, Mm -hmm. I mean, wisdom from... It's not a coincidence at all. ...on number channeled works and 
yeah it's everything's aligning and it's fascinating yes yeah and all of it it's interesting because a lot of that information started coming out around you know the 2012 mark you know and we had a we had a mass awakening of of people and now now it's like it's almost like the awake people are polarized themselves too you know yeah and we're all just we're all just mm -hmm, we're all just navigating that polarity a lot of the most spiritual people that i know in my life right now refuse to see that there's something fishy going on you know but that's okay and and if we're not okay with that then Mm -hmm. we're no better than well we all we're not yeah well we're doing the same thing in another way basically Mm-hmm. Right. And so I, it's it's just a process of allowing people to really just experience their own experience and believe what they want to believe. And if you are in misalignment, if you're not aligned with what they're believing, then you just act in the way that is aligned with you. You don't need to control what the other person is doing. You have to act in a way that's aligned with what mm. what you are observing and believing. Yeah. And maybe we'll start realizing that there's something fishy about duality because it's there is biases. yes yes oh very interesting good that's a good wraparound <laughs> i like that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah definitely and neptune's in pisces and that's that's the something fishy right now is that the illusion is isn't you illusion right duality yeah the illusion is, is the, the truth illusion. is in unity mm-hmm. it's telling go. us directly yeah, yeah. There we go. So, um, is there anything else you want to share? No, I think that's. I think that's good. I think this has been a great conversation. I think this is a good end point. What do you think? I, I think so too. I'm, I'm getting that vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. We're winding down. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. thank you. It was a great conversation. And um, yeah, yeah, anytime. And I'll have to listen to the podcast that you put up yesterday, the one about permaculture. I'm excited to listen to that. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it. I'd like that that was yesterday and it sort of, you know, fits together, sort of. Yeah, we can. Yeah, definitely. Cool. All right. So, um, well, I'd like to interview again. And um, absolutely. I'd love to come on again. I think we, I think I, I, I enjoy our conversations very much, you know? So I think, I think it's more of like a back and forth, you know? Yeah. That, that's the and best that's, way to do it. We're like, we're like recording a conversation rather than it being an interview, but it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy spending time with you here, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So thank you for listening. If you have been, or if you're in the future, which is just the moment that we're in now, uh, ultimately. Thank you, and um, goodbye. So, uh, and uh, bye, Sky. Bye-bye, Nick.